Today we cover the new fitness room, give you some reminders of upcoming events, and leave you with your weekend forecast. All that and more today, Friday, February 7th, 2020. Good morning, Devils. We're glad to be back this week. Remember that today is the opening night of the musical The Addams Family. Tickets will be sold at the door for $10, 7 for kids, and senior citizens are free. Concessions will be sold during intermission. Come support your theater department and come see your seniors in their last show. It'll be worth it. Report cards will be given out today and you will be called down to your advisor for the last five minutes of the school day to receive them. Juniors, this goes out to you. If you want to take your SAT this year, the in-school date is April 14th. You must sign up in guidance by February 28th with your $49.50 ready to pay. Have free or reduced lunch? No worries, your cost is only $8. Distracted Driving Simulators will be here for the last week of February and Ms. Rondeau will be going around classes to sign up students. All seniors and juniors, as well as any permitted or licensed underclassmen, can and should sign up. Seniors, back to you. Don't miss your chance to get some scholarships. The Murdoch website has been updated along with new ones coming. You can check out the scholarship website at greaterwister.org. The deadline is March 2nd and you can apply to all of the scholarships with just one application. The school is currently expanding its fitness room, so we interviewed our athletic director, Miss Whitaker, to get the scoop. Pleasure meeting with Jenna here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why this kind of sudden change is happening? For the weight room, yes. So we've been talking about it for quite a while now. Um, the location of the old weight room, great location. However, the room was very, very small. So when we had our football team in there, um, a lot of times over the summer, they would actually have to take the weights outside the door because, or outside um, into the grassed in area to do a lot of their workouts because it was so cramped and tiny in there. Um, same thing with the track athletes. When you had the whole team in there, it, there we had a great setup as far as weights, but it got too crowded and kind of counterproductive. Um, so we had the opportunity to um, get some equipment from the Clark Memorial and which was an awesome donation from them, but it definitely wasn't gonna fit in the former weight room. Um, so we had the idea to move closer to my office down here um, where the room is a lot bigger. There's a big garage door that in the summertime you could open it, let the air in, um, do inside outside workouts. It would just be a lot more productive um, in a better location for the weight room. That's amazing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the equipment that the Clark had graciously donated to us? Yes, the Clark had given us all of their benches. Um, they gave us the entire set of their free weights from, I don't know, I think it's like 10 pounders all the way up to the 100 pound free weights um, with the racks that they sit on and everything. Uh, a couple machines, um, a couple arm machines. And let's see, what else did they give us? They gave us a whole whole list of stuff. So um, it, we're definitely gonna have an awesome weight room when all is said and done. All right, um, and our last question, how do you plan on kind of monitoring this new weight room? How are you gonna plan on running it? So when we're hoping, again, we have to discuss it, we still need to purchase rubber flooring before anything can even happen in that area um, to protect the floor underneath from all the weights. But we definitely plan on hopefully using it during gym class, um, where if there's a class that me and Mr. LeBlanc have together, one of us would be in the weight room, kind of going over lifting and safety and stuff like that, monitoring, and the other of us would be in the gym. Um, as far as like after school, it would have to be with a coach, an assistant coach, or an adult, obviously, um, because it can be dangerous. I mean, you're talking about potentially 100 pound dumbbells and a bunch of free weights and stuff that if you don't know what you're doing, um, you could get very hurt in there. So um, there's also going to be, we did have donations of treadmills, ellipticals, bikes, um, we're kind of in the process of collecting some of that stuff, so it's not all weights, it's some cardio in there also. All right, thank you so much, Jenna. Not a problem. Blue Devil Weekly is really excited to see the progress that's going on here, and now let's go back to the studio. Now over to our student meteorologist, Justin, for the weekly weather update. This is your upcoming five-day forecast. Yesterday, as you can see, we got a little amount of snow. 
This bad weather today will be moving out later tonight, clearing up for the weekend, but we're going to see the temps in the low teens and single digits at night, and only rising into the lower 20s. The early part of next week looks slightly warmer into the upper 30s during the day with mostly cloudy skies. Enjoy the nicer weather this weekend. Now back to Patrick Guiana in the studio. Thank you, Justin. Now over to our sports desk for the Sports Weekly Update with Alec and LJ. Last Monday, the boys' varsity basketball team took on Aspa and got the W, 73-62. Next, on Wednesday, they took on Leicester and got another win with the score of 65-47. Friday, they took on Tejanto and got another win, 92-54. And the win streak finally ended with a hard loss to Hopedale, 79-62. Last Tuesday, the girls took on Sizer and brought home a 40-33 win. On Friday, they took on Tejanto, and on Tuesday, they took on Bromfield. The final score of the Tejanto game was 53-23, and the final score of the Bromfield game was 42-22. The boys track team did great in their last track meet. Logan Huff came in second in hurdles and third in 55 meter dash. Justin Manuel came in fourth in the 1000. Justin Thierry coming in fourth in the 55 hurdles and sixth in the high jump. For girls 4x8, Bree Bouchard, Lily Digman, and Lillian Sawinski and Avery Murphy got second place in a nail biter losing by .02 seconds. Bree Bouchard also got first place in the 55 meter hurdles making her league champion. Lily Digman also got league champion in the 600 meter. And that's all for the Sports Weekly Update. Back to Patrick and Leon in the studio. Thanks, you two. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Make sure to come to opening night tonight. Be sure to like and subscribe and push the notification bell to be notified when we post next. Bye. Bye.